What's up, boys? Nah, I'm not muted, am I? enjoying some music yeah unfortunately playing all the music yesterday uh, i got my stream removed but i think it still exists on twitter um so i was gonna watch my own shit uh, okay All right, all good. I thought a friend of mine might join me, but too much DMX for one stream. Yeah, man, I gotta say that unique voice of DMX is really quite something. It's a great one. It's a very, very good one. Anyway, let's um see. Let's see how I play. I open a hand and quit a table. You got, by the way, there's really no solution here. So this guy was probably the fish, this player. He just randomly leaves in the middle of this hand or while I'm under the gun. These dudes are 100 ratting. Like, I'm open to having a table start occurring, although I have obviously the worst seat for that situation. Um, but yeah, the point is, if you post your BB, it's just going sit out, sit out, sit out, and you fucked. So even though you don't usually get grimmed heads up on stars, like, you know, it's some kind of a grimming if you don't, uh, you know. You gotta just get out of there. Fuck, fuck having, letting the rats have their cheese, you know? Oh uh, yeah, so first hand, go, I go for the spice straight away. This is actually pretty, pretty fucking weird spot. So he pots seabeds, like probably a fish. What do you do? Top two, dry, just call. Cool. Doesn't really seem like another option there. It's not like you could even put this into solver because they might only use this sizing with super, super strong hands or something, you know? And you have no idea, just uh, clueless against fish. Um, check on the ace turn, he snap checks behind. Um, I think a bet, I mean, you could maybe go for some weird blocker bet here. I decide not to do it. It could have been an okay play. Um, yeah, and I end up check raising, just fuck him, you know? <laughs> fuck you. I don't know if my hand's really that good uh, to go for it, but the thing is, if we had weaker, we probably already bluffed the river. Like, is it better to check raise if I just had like king queen in my hand or king 10? That I check all the flop, king 10, 9, check all flop, end up taking my showdown on the river, go for the bluff raise. Is that better than having this jack? Maybe, because like ace jack is a weaker hand that can bet fold. Um, but anyway, I decided to bluff raise this. It felt kind of all right. Random puss sizing from fish. I, I don't know, calling just felt a little bit bad. But yeah, whatever. To whatever play. On the right table, I overcall KK pre, and I have diamonds. And then on the turn, I have a six. I could semi bluff, like some value, like value against some hands, bluff against some hands, uh, with the overbooked KK. Or I can check, uh, call. I end up check calling and donk leading the diamond, which it's not really that hard to bluff on this card. Basically, any um, open ender pair kind of hand that doesn't want to fold the turn, which is all of them versus a delayed half pot um could want to bluff here if if one diamond and then i fold this kk 10 8 single from the small blind i'm curious if i would fold like king king 10 9 single from the bb though maybe i'll have a quick look at that not something i thought about at the time like i saw the spot i was just pretty sure it's a fold so i folded um but yeah i mean it's it's getting towards late position what percentage of kings can we cold call? 4.3, 10, 8, and it's cold fouring double and folding the rest. How bad is like single? Single, playing it is just terrible. Losing 1.8 BB to cold call. Let's have a look out of the BB though. What cold call percent can we have with kings here? 8% almost. Okay, that's a bit more interesting. 10, 9 single suit. Yeah, oh, hold on. That's not. Yeah, so even with this hand, which is a significant upgrade, um, it's still just atrocious. Losing half a BB to enter the pot. Is the three better a loose player? I got no idea, mate. 
I, I don't really play based on that. I tell you this, it's extremely hard to three bet as much as Solver wants to. It really is. Like Solver doesn't even three bet like a crazy amount, but just finding all the combos is tough. Um, so in general, people are less less three bet heavy um, than they should be. But yeah, some some regs will show up with like a disgusting like a seven four deuce double suited three bet, you know, stuff like this. Um, I might just go to the toilet before we really get into the stream because otherwise it's gonna happen later. Excuse me. Worth the weight, right? In position, you defend almost 100% to a three bit heads up pot. No. Uh, anyway, I lead the river um, on the right. I think it's absolutely standard. I think I'd rather, like, of flushes that were king high that you could consider checking, like the overbooked one makes no sense to me. He's going to be checking back way more hands when you have three diamonds. Plus, like, if you want to bet calling non-nut flush, that's a great one. It's an absolute gold mine of a bet call.
uh, overcall the small blind min raise with this hand. Yeah, I remember this. I'd end up donking the flop. It's four way. Um, I mainly do it because I have the high roll. I don't think I would just flop this and be like, yeah, let's go. Donk into fucking three other people. Um, but like with a blocker to, you know, a set of jacks and top two, it feels kind of reasonable, right? And it's not like we like our draw that much. Like check calling this is fucking disgusting, you know? But it's obviously a good enough flop to not want to just like let go of our hand for free. So a donk kind of makes sense. Uh, often that's how donks work. If your hand doesn't want to check call and doesn't want to check raise, but it doesn't want to check fold, donk. <laughs> that's kind of a good rule. Anyway, so I, I think this is a reasonable play, but I definitely wouldn't do it every time. I just rolled for it. And I seem to enjoy winning the pot. And then, oh yeah, this, uh, this is a pretty standard play here. Like, there's some weird levels that can go on in this right table where since we flat a lot of kings in small blind, like kings and queens kind of hands, like, you could trap aces in position here, you know? But what usually happens is that people will rejam pretty light, like, basically trying to force our 3.5 BB to be dead money in the pot. So versus a regen, like folding decent kings is honestly kind of tough because they might just regen like entire range. Like people play the spot quite differently. I like the line. I don't, I don't necessarily like it, but I, I like considering the trap with AA because of the play that it induces um, from the small blind, like this back raise. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Once he flats, I, I think it's pretty default to back raise the KK. Overcalling out of position just gives him too good of a spot. Oh yeah, there was quite a few interesting hands in this session. So in on this right table, um, we're about to flop a straight flush on a guy. Uh, on the left table, we don't see, but uh, it seems totally normal. So yeah, we flop a strizzy flizzy. Um, and I'm just thinking about like what to do really, like check back frequency and stuff. I don't know. It feels like a kind of okay hand to bet. And then the choice to size down makes a lot of sense with this hand. I don't know though generally like what strategy I like on these boards, like specifically a straight flush board. You probably don't want to bet as many sets. So this idea of thirding probably makes less sense. Um, but like a clueless whale, I decide to just third because you don't want anyone to fold two pair. <laughs> you know what I mean? You want people to make a hizzy in this exact spot. So I end up being kind of face up, uh, even though it's not like the worst sizing choice, I might not actually make it most of the time on this board since we don't want to bet two pair and sets as often. Um, and then this turn rolls. And so now like a dry pair is a pretty good hand uh, to barrel and continue barreling because you're unblocking flushes. But I have the nuts. And so if I can bet, it's a spot where our range is obviously checking back a lot, but I don't feel the need to balance that check back with this hand. Like if I, if you wanted to check back a strong hand, like pocket eights, pocket tens, jack eight, as good as it gets, you know? So yeah, we just go for it. And then like, we're pretty polar on the river, but at the same time, like I actually do have bluffs way more than most people in this spot so i feel okay about um the full pot river sizing some people would bet small and like pray that their opponent uh, shoves on them you know what i mean because like if oh, if i bet too big he'll just call with a full house you know i don't know man i i just think about my own strategy like whatever with their range you know like this idea of trying to induce people is not particularly good over on the left table we actually had something kind of interesting we opened this pre cut off which is a bit it's on the dusty side but it's fine and then I could do something on the flop, but I feel like check is standard, probably check call button. But when it goes check bet and call, I don't think my hand over calls that well. Non nut gut shot, jack high backdoor, and that's it. Uh, so yeah, I end up check over folding. Yeah, you're correct, Shadow. Yeah, like I don't like this. So if you watch on the right table here, so the guy goes into time bank. Watch, he, so he burns down into time bank. The time starts ticking. Look how many seconds go off the clock. 13 seconds off his time bank before jamming. And like this, like I hate these kind of low level players where they're like pretending 
like that they ha like they just always fucking have it with this timing they always have it whatever the nuts is that's what they've got and this guy i mean he might have been considering like should i value jam this hand or not it's interesting right because he has a jack he has two tens i mean the the chopping factor is kind of irrelevant he's trying to get called by jack eight which is not really a hand to stab the flop that much um which could fold to his river range because you know he probably doesn't have anywhere near enough bluffs for a turn check call to then check jam the river. So like, what would he check call turn? You know, that he's going to check jam river as a bluff. He'd have to have a flush plus a pair. And the pair would probably have to be a 10. Um, to even consider it. And then like, the, the thing, yeah, people just have imbalanced timing. So I was just giving him shit because it was so obvious um, that he had it before I called. It's whatever. That's just me shit talking. It's, uh, yeah. It's nothing on him. I actually think in spots like that that are super complicated, it's fair to use um, a bunch of time because you have to think specifically about like quite complicated things to figure out what you want to bluff with. Um, because you don't want to bluff very often, giving you're giving your opponent incredible odds on a call. So yeah, you don't want to bluff that often. But at the same time, you have to have some bluffs, and they're complicated to find. It's usually going to involve having a flush yourself, um, since it's very hard to have no flush. Um, what else do I want to say about that? No, that's about it. Uh, but yeah, the th I guess the main thing is just that these noobs just always have it <laughs> like when they're, when they're banking like that, they don't just turn some complicated shit into a bluff for a min jam. Um, on the left table here, I don't really know if I like this play that I make here. Um, basically opponents see bets half bodies of fish and I have a hand that's, you know, it doesn't want to just check fold, but it is a half pot C bet, which is a bit bigger than you expect to see on this board. So I don't know if I would always call this, but I had a high raw. I was like, well, fuck it. I won't always fold it. That makes sense. I don't raise it. It feels like this is an okay hand to just check call, check fold. Check call, check fold. Like I already, I know I trap enough trips um, that I don't have to worry about my turn range. So yeah, we do check call the flop. And the turn is a total brick. I check, he checks it back. And then the river is a seven. And I decide to just turn my hand into a bluff for pot. Uh, this is a little bit exploitative because if I wanted to turn stuff into a bluff, like I don't really have bluffs calling the flop. So I'd prefer to use a, a smaller sizing um, in general. So uh, would I then bluff like if I'm betting small? It's tricky. I just felt like if this fish had an overpair, he probably mucks because like, what does he beat? Like he has to beat a check peeled hand that's bluffing river. And it didn't feel like I could have that many of them from Fisher's perspective. So if he had AA, he might just put me on like a queen in the back door straight or a four or whatever the fuck. So I decided it's a little bit exploited of bluff against fish. I, I don't even know if it's a good play. It's kind of just random clicking. The flop decision was close though. Queen nine eight four fold some hand that was a fold oh yeah here i decide to play this hand on the left table against fish um i was basically i knew it would be a losing play but i decided to i could justify um if it was a slightly losing call i could justify it against a fish because i do have an ace in my hand so i'm not getting squeezed as much it's not like i'm peeling just some dusty broadway hand that i shouldn't call um but the, yeah see and i screen cap it here um, I do recall the result of this. Um, it's actually losing 0.22 BB to call here. Um, so I don't think it's justified against a fish with four people left to act. I think it's just a bad call. Is it a beer? Of course not, mate. I'm sober for four years. Uh, it's a coffee. Mm. And on the right table, a four-way flop um, versus uh, short stack C better. He's going to C bet on the King 10. Like This is like a 0% C bet with range, basically very hard to find like one of your five percent c bets and so we have second set dry and i think honestly we're just up against top set like all fucking day and like nut wraps and shit um so when when this card falls even though we have a blocker even though we have a gutty even though we have a sizzy against range that he probably has like we're just fucking dead like the only hand we beat is aa king like ace ace king like the c bet would make sense the bluff on the turn would make sense it's really the only hand we beat or like some hand with King Jack Jack, but there's not that many of those that are dry from under the gun. It would have to be like King Jack Jack eight double suited. Yeah, stuff like that. 
So yeah, he just barrels it and I'm just thinking about it and I end up mucking. I think the fold is totally fine. Whether or not it's a theory fold is a different question. It's probably not a theory fold, but can't see betting into three opponents on a board that you shouldn't see bet. I mean, they just have it all day. Either that or they're pure retards. So yeah, I could come up with a couple of bluffs for him. I block the bluffs, which is a bit rough. So yeah, I don't mind the fold. Oh yeah. I kind of remember this pot. What happens here? I four Barry. I get Coldy Donk Jams. Okay, cool. Free cash. The guy's squeezing with dust on the left table. Squeezing with dust. I actually don't know if this is a fine fold or not. Jack 883 nut suit. I end up folding it pre. We're going to have a quick look. I didn't screen cap it. Nah, it's a good fold. What's the what's the EV loss of the hand? It's not bad though, yeah. Oh seven, Jack with a four, easy call. So it was on the fence, this fold. It was a good fold to make. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean that guy, I mean he's a fish. Fish like can have bluffs. You gotta credit fish, they're great at having bluffs. So I'll just skip through the recording a bit. Uh, I think I end up overcalling pre here. And then I have a spot where I could potentially donk, but without a spade, I don't really want to do it much. Because min bet, I could also raise, but again, without a spade, it feels kind of bad, man. On the bottom right table, I've got the low wrap, like defending a min raise. I got the low wrap. What do I do? I like bluff the turn in the river, I guess, probably. Oh, yeah, I think I third the river and he calls me with a set of nines and a spade, which is absolutely reasonable. Yeah, so I won't, I won't play through those. Here we've got a squeeze on the right. Oh, yeah, we go heads up. This is an interesting spot. So it's a short stack fish opponent. And uh, we go for the small C bet um, on this board. Obviously, we're doing uh, lots of just potting the flop as well. Um, but yeah, definitely going to mix in the small sizing just for hands like this, plus like the super strong hands. Probably any top set with one spade or more um, would go into the smaller sizing and top set backdoor flush draw, probably smaller sizing as well. So, yep. Uh, yeah, I decide to give up the turn. It's very disappointing because honestly, a lot of his range will fold to a shove. Um, but because it's two-tone, which I don't even interact with slightly, he's going to have too many hands that just have the equity to call it off. And I am like dead. I'm just dead against those hands. Dead. Even like a six and a flush draw. I'm like fucked against a six and a flush draw. So yeah, I decide not to jam my absolute zero equity. Feels bad, but probably a fine decision. And then I also d decide not to call with my bluff catcher on the river, despite my range being like totally fucked. Like I never have shit here. I might be at like top of range here. I mean, what could I have here possibly? I could have uh, what? I would have to three bet a hand that had pocket queens and a flush. That ch Yeah, I just don't really have that. Queen, queen, jack, 10, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, whatever. The, I'm, my range is absolutely fucked here. I fold. Uh, on the left table, we opened, which was a bad play, actually, and called a squeeze, which is fine. And then we just gave up the pot, which is all good. Oh, uh, yeah. So here, I, I remember I remember this. I, I squeezed this hand. Um, it's actually terrible. It's actually a terrible squeeze. And the correct line is to fold preflop. This hand just looks like a good hand, but it's it's not. It's, it's a trap. It's not a good hand. Even though a 10-9 high board would be incredible for this fucking hand. So this is a just a really bad play. I mean, to be honest, like like both the opponents are whales. It makes it slightly better. Um, but yeah, so this flop rolls off and we just check fold. And we also get three, we get three bet on the left table at the same time pretty pretty interesting spot like uh, you flop the dry ace of diamonds bottom pair oh it's not dry i guess ace of diamonds king bottom pair um i low roll but it feels like a pretty good high frequency stab so 
Like the only thing that's um, interesting about it is like you still need to have a nut blocker um, for checkback lines. So like, how do you want to have a nut blocker for checkback lines? Like I can have some AA and do it. I can have some um, no pair uh, ace of diamonds. What's better? Would you rather bet when you have a pair or you know what I mean? If I had top pair ace of diamonds, I could take a different line. I felt like bottom pair betting is reasonable because I can have equity against some hands that check call like with my live cards. Um, plus, I block continues a little bit more often. And if I want to three barrel off, um, he's got less equity with check calling sets, which he might have to fold the river if they're dry set. Um, but anyway, I turned two pair, so I decide no bluff is probably the right decision. And then somehow make a hizzy on the river. And he checks again. So any checked back flush, I have to value bet here. Uh, yeah, so I just use the sizing where I would uh, want to bet like a flush plus. So I don't want to pot and be polarized. I want to just, I mean, to be honest, you, you could easily over bluff for this line anyway with flop stabbing hands that check back. But yeah, I go for this sizing. I think he folds in the end. It's terrible because it's 150s. Now, queen jack eight seven double is just a fold in those positions. Like we can look at the EV real quick. It's it's quite bad. So it goes like bang, bang. I think it was these positions. Queen Jack 8, 7. Yeah, so if we flat call, we would lose an additional 1, 5 BB. Or with our, we had this suit, the low suit combo, we'd lose 0.25. And if we 3 bet, we lose half a blind with our really bad combo. Slightly less with the high suit combos. So yeah, our particular hand, the low suit, was really punted. We gave away a small blind in EV by squeezing. Um, we defend this 10. Ace, queen, 10. Um, what does Ubersherms do? He checks to the button. Yeah, so this is kind of a shit spot on the right table. We overcall preflop to a 2.2 BB open. I think that's fine. And then um, fish ends up stabbing half pot when we go check, check to the fish. Um, the problem is the aggressive preflop uh, should be checking the board like really, really, really often, like 90% probably. And so when I check call here, like I'm getting check raised actually quite a lot. I have really no outs to improve whatsoever. Um, and the button stabbing range, like any value hand has me actually pretty cooked from the button stabbing range. So I just didn't think it was that good of a spot to check call for halfy here and end up folding the flop. Not sure best decision ever. I, I probably should have um, called this min raise on the left table as well. I end up folding like without really looking at the spot enough. So yeah, that was a bad fold, I think. Kind of interesting limped pot on the right. I check this board, which is obviously good for the check back player since we don't limp that many hands that have the deuce three, etc. And now on the turn, uh, we have a queen of hearts and we still have our eight and we also have a seven blocking some continues. I decide to bet as like a semi bluff, an equity denial hand, because if we check any pots, for example, we're literally drawing dead against some of the value hands and we're behind all the other value hands reasonably significantly. We have no like good outs on the river. You know, we could even have reverse implied odds where we check call, we hit a fucking eight or a jack or a queen or whatever, and it's just a terrible card for us. We just pay off a straight, which we don't block. Um, so I decided because of that, it would make more sense to just bet for equity denial. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a good thought. It seemed okay, but not too sure. You don't open for pot anymore? I, I open uh, different sizes depending on the stacks behind me. I'll, I'll talk about that when it comes up next. Here, um, we get cold called by a fish uh, and this button player. And we have SPR, what, four with the fish and three with the button. And uh, yeah, I think we're mixing C bet sizes here a bit. And we're definitely going to pot some top set. This one felt fine to me. We don't interact even slightly with the board except for the ace of diamonds, which is a backdoor. But that doesn't really change too much about how our opponents continue their hands. Uh, so we unblock every single possible draw. So I decide that's a good enough reason to just pot C bet. On the right, I actually should have open raised this hand. I was just scared because I know that if it's a 50 BB table, this hand is a fold. But at a 50 BB table, so like where all the positions behind me are 50 BB effective, it's only losing like 01 BB to open this. 
And so I'm 100 BB plus with two of the remaining players and like 140 BB with the big blind. And this hand's worth 0.1 BB in that situation. So I think it's obviously an open. So bad fold. Anyway, that's how these pots go. I'm pretty sure I take down the left. No one. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. This guy just jams. He jams with a set of queens. So, like, this is just a retarded fucking play. This is terrible. Like, my squeeze and pot C bet, like, obviously, I have a bunch of really strong hands. Like, he can't do anything with queens. Like, he has to get fucked. But the correct line is just a call. And then when, for example, this turn rolls off like the six of hearts, it might go check, check, and then the river check, check, you know? So you might get, you don't get stacked by AA now. Um, whereas on every safe turn, you still get it in and feel fine about it. So I think he just picks a, a losing line, even though he can't really fold. Yeah, nothing really I can do on the right table. Doesn't matter. Blind me blind limped pot. I probably stab the flop. Get cold. I probably barrel the turn. I threw bit some AA. Oh, this is an interesting AA hand. So I guess we'll mainly pay attention to this AA hand. And honestly, I don't know the spot super well. I'm tempted to maybe we can have a look if there's some post flop four bet pot uh turns. Six max one on one. 100 BB, 4-bet pot. We'll use these ranges, 4-bet. Oh, no, but that changes who the ranges are. The problem is it's a cold 4-bet. Let's run our own sim. I'm actually quite curious about this. Give me a sec. How long have I played PLO? Well, you know, I've played poker in total since I was 18 and I'm 36. <laughs> so I've played some PLO throughout all of that. Um, but I only started using a solver two years ago or whatever, a year and a half ago for PLO. So it's hard to really say. Oh, what am I doing? I'm such an idiot. I'm trying to open what Munker, right? God, I'm such a dumb fish. All right, let's have let's try and figure out what's going on here. Um, so we need to make a a flop sim. Pot limit flop. Next, uh, SPR. Great fucking question. Sixty eight BB, sixty eight point five. So it's basically pot. Let's use the exact stacks. Why not? Yep. Um, add bets and raises according to custom action. Sure. Can I edit that? No, I can't. I need to download this um, new version of Monka. This is quite tilting, honestly. Remove. Uh, I think I ended up seabending 20%, which... Oops. Uh, all in, fold, call. Should I put min raise? Nah, probably not. Practically no one's going for that play here. So let's just have this check. And then what what stab sizing would this guy want to use? Does it it's a queen eight eight rainbow? Like I don't think people would ever bet large if there's a check. I don't I don't really think we're checking though. So um what does that mean for us? Stab sizing. It probably just means it doesn't matter. Whatever. I'll just I'll leave it. It's kind of an irrelevant node. So Siva all in call and then turn all in or check. Check all in or check. Yeah, this is fine. This is actually just a totally fine sim. Ranges, please. Sorry guys. This will be just a, a little minute here. Okay. What are we doing? So it goes raise, raise, and then we need the re-raising range from this. Copy to clipboard, please. Hello. Thank you. And uh, the big blind, that's us. Ah, well copied. That copied very nicely. They fucking lied to me. Copy to clipboard, bitch. 
Cop range copy, okay. Okay, there we go. There's a range. Oh, what the? I'm going to just repaste that. I don't know why there's a bunch of blank space at the end. Hopefully it's fine. Uh, and then we need this dude's calling range. Three percent hands. Okay. Uh, and then we want to solve the exact. Oh no, sorry. We want to solve. Yeah, it's sure the exact flop from the video. Heart club diamond. Yeah. So let's we'll check back on that in a second. Um, but what actually goes down is I do. I think I see about twenty percent. I should really make a button. Like I've got 25, why, why not have 20 as well? I have to manually type it, yeah. It's really annoying, I, I don't like that. So we see about the flop. I'm assuming it's a range bet spot. That's how I would play the pot. And then we, we get called and the turn, it's not a good card, nine of diamonds. And here's where I think I fuck up. I think it's just a jam. I just forgot the SPR and I thought about his floating range. I'm like, man, that's a pretty good card for his floating range, you know? So I decided to check call this one off. Um, instead of betting. And I think it's just a bad decision. I think I'm supposed to just bet. And the hand ends up going super weird because he checks back and then uh, jams over me on a river, which polarizes him pretty hard. Is it not ridiculous to assume the three better has a perfectly solved preflop three betting range? Yeah, but what do you want to do? Do you want to go through every single combination of cards in PLO and make up uh, a guess of what his range actually is? Is that how you'd rather do it? It's not very time efficient. <laughs> um, oh yeah, this one I went bang, bang. I guess I just bluffed the river here on the right table. I don't seem to have another choice. Having this AD is not great, but 7-8 on that river, it's probably not too bad. Blocking all straights with an 8, so. Understandable river bluff. Uh, let's reset. So yeah, it looks like we're range betting. The only reason we needed to run this was just to get the, um, the next one ready. Because we need to input uh, the stuff for the turn, which is the 9 of diamonds, right? So let's get on with that turn, pot limit, stacks, oh yeah, stacks are what? Let's figure that out, 95 BB and with 55 BB, okay. So let's uh, grab that. What, what did I say the pot was? 95 BB, okay. Yeah, cool. Hot size bets and raises, sure. Okay. Um, ranges, yeah. Okay, that's the part we're going to need input on. Let's uh, hopefully stop this. Copy the clipboard, the big blind range. Why is my range smaller than it was pre? actually doesn't make any sense, but whatever. And here are some jams. Okay, interesting. Queen of Hearts, eight, eight, nine. And then, yeah, basically, should I, should I just be pot jamming this turn all day? I've got a 10. I have no diamond in my hand. So he'll more often have a turned queen with flush draw that he can't fold that I get value from. So yeah, how bad of a check was my check? I'm going to guess it was a bad check, but it's not going to be like the worst EV. And then um, when presented with an option on the river, should I do what I did, which was bet small? Or should I just jam or should I just check? Yeah, interesting. I'm going to guess the river was probably okay, actually. Yeah, there's some dry AA shoving here. Just dry as a bone AA. 
Ace of Diamonds looking like it wants to check. So we'll let this cook for a little bit. This is probably the only sim I'm going to have to run today. Uh, but yeah, over to the right table. Um, we end up bluffing here. You can't really blame us for wanting to have a go. I don't know if I like the sizing though, because I'm repping all these other value hands for the flop and the turn action. So maybe I'm better off uh, not having this more polarized river sizing, which he calls blockerless, by the way. I think this call is actually bad against this line. I'd rather, as him, I'd honestly rather have like fucking jack 10 dry, like just top pair and a fucking 10 than have this hand. <laughs> this hand makes no sense at all. He's got a set and a pair and that's it. So he's just running into a straight like shitloads. So my bluff was marginal there, his call. I don't I don't really think it's it's not a very thinking call. He just snaps off. I was set. You know, it's kind of dumb. Any two pair straight blocker is a better hand there against the line I've taken. Um yeah, so on the left table we and it goes check check on the turn. And then on the river. So check check on the turn, it basically means he has to have jack ten with diamonds, maybe, or better. Like if he has value. So he has to like the the only hands that he feels comfortable checking back right are full houses on the turn. Uh so this isn't really changing much. Let's have a look here. How should I have played my particular AA? Let's stop it. Ace Ace 10. So 50-50. Um what was my exact combo? I don't have any diamond, right? So I have spade, spade, I have one club and a heart. So ace of clubs. Spade, spade. Mainly jam. Mainly jam. Probably with a three is jamming as well, right? Yeah, just shoving. And how bad was checking? Yeah, so I lost about a small blind of EV by checking. Ace of clubs, three of hearts, that exact combo. Yeah, like a little bit less than a small blind. So whatever, not the worst play ever, but as expected, not the play we wanted to make. Um, let us... Let us uh, have a look here, though. So we're going to check. Copy that to clipboard. Let's just finish this sim off. Why not? We're in Rome. Let's do it properly. Huh? What? Open, bitch. All right, so we want to make a new one, a rivery uh, pot, 95 stacks, fit. oops. 55. Um, pot size, bets and raises. Okay. Oh, no, it's not. No, fuck. Ah, <laughs> uh, man, that's dumb. I just fucked it up, right? That's okay. Custom action, please. We would like to add a 25% riverbed option, which our opponent can shove on, call or fold. Yes. Ranges. And did I just copy the big blinds range, right? The checking range. Yeah. So we check and then in position checks back. Copy that. Queen of hearts, eight, eight, nine. And what was the fucking river? Four. Whatever. All right. Let's see. Let's see the end result of this one. What AA want to check? What AA want to bet? So AA is like quarter only if it bets. SA is 10. Preferring to quarter. So far. Ace, Jack, Jack, Deuce with the slow rolling river jam as a bluff. How's it going, bitch? Okay. What's the EV difference so far of this line with this hand? Check, it's like barely worse. Jam is pretty bad compared to check or quarter.
Anyway, let's have a bet and a jam. We call most of the time. What do we fold? Do we fold some AA? Just dry AA? No, we call off uh, most of it. And AA with a 10, I guess we call it all off. No, apparently with our exact hand, uh, we'd rather fold than call. So we played it bad on the river. But the costly decision was less than a small blind in EV at this point of the sim. I'm not that curious to run the sim further. I think that's enough information for me. The river sizing decision seemed good. Uh, the turn play was probably just a mistake. Not a very costly one. And then the river decision, marginal but incorrect probably. That's enough info for me. So sorry about the long, long process there. I just wanted a, a bit better info on what I was up to in that spot. But yeah, we do end up betting the river and calling the jam facing, you know, a pretty good price here, whatever the fuck that price is. Insane to one. I don't like the, t the thing is with this 10, I don't really block value. Like having a nine or a queen um, is endlessly better. But at the same time, like for these odds, like how much can we really fucking fold? Apparently only a quarter of our aces that bet the river can fold to this jam. And so this one having a 10 seems better than, you know, having some other random aces with like a king or whatever. So yeah, I time bank it up and pay the mana stack. Sad times, bro. I think this one becomes slightly interesting on the left. I defend Puri, I check call flop. He caps himself on turn, check, check. And then on river, we make the straight with an offsuit five. And we have the decision. What should we do versus a man who's basically capped? I like to bet frequently. That's what I like to do. So if you consider how weak he is and what this run out looks like, he's quite polarized often. He can have a lot of one pair hands, but out like for real value, it's only hands that like made a straight for him, which is fuck all. Because a lot of them barrel, obviously. So he's basically cucked here. Therefore, I feel like sizing down is fine and just betting like every single two pair right in his face. Maybe some of the weakest ones check calling, but yeah, just betting a bunch. Half pot seemed like an okay size. On the right table, I C bet with uh, fours and an ace high backdoor flush. Get called, turn an ace, take the, sh take the showdown. And then on the river again, take the showdown. He has a very standard hand to beat me. On the left, I overcall pre. Um, we flop bottom two plus straight. This hand's interesting. I decide to lead third. Very bad board for the imposition player. Also, small blind flatting range um, should be higher cards than this. So I decide leading is okay. Plus this hand can bet call a raise pretty easily, like of low straights that lead. And we have the, the outs to full house. Plus, if you ever want to bluff, like with two pair uh, on a board pair, the top pairing card is like, you, you know what I mean? Like you get the most folds. So having bottom two is, is quite nice when, when a seven comes. Because if they're like, man, he could have a two pair, you know? Because people don't usually have bottom two for the bet call. Usually people play bottom two more passively. Um, so yeah, that's about all my thoughts uh, here. We end up leading and checking. Yeah, I actually don't know what the fuck I'm doing here. I guess I'm just aware that like his range to continue flop is somewhat strong um, with the dude behind him. Like he, he's just folding a shitload to flop to the flop stab. So I, I decide to like play a more cautious line here with this hand. I don't really like it because if he has the nuts, I can't fold anyway, kind of, you know, because we don't really know how he's playing his, uh, his seven, eight, his six, eight hands that peel the flop. Like he might just play them aggro. And then, yeah, anyway, so the point is I can't really fold. Even if he pots the turn and pots the river, like I, I'd, I'd be pretty, it's a sketchy fold to make. So I think I should just uh, have continued barreling small because he has to peel a bunch of pans that have a backdoor on the flop and stuff. And then one of those comes in, I decide to make the block a bet and possibly call a raise with this hand. I do have a club, but it really doesn't block that many flushes of this club. Um, so I'm just thinking about my sizing and yeah, when he checks back the turn, he's reasonably capped at like two pair and stuff. I think he actually had a set though, maybe. Set of sixes, if I recall. I'm not showing it to the stream, but I think he had a set of sixes. Anyway, whatever, can't blame him. Hmm. 
Ocean Infinity, bro. No offense, you don't know shit about the game. You, you know what are you what are you saying? You're talking about a four bet pot. Oh yeah, let's just play a completely retarded strategy that makes no sense. How is it better to play a retarded strategy? Like it's a pretty like it's a finished part of the game tree. You know, SPR one. You want to make up your own retarded strategy. What you check the flop? What are they gonna pot all in as a bluff? Like, <laughs> what are you thinking? If you play a good strategy, it's on them to also play a good strategy. Otherwise, they lose. You know, like that's the goal of the game. Nonsense, low stakes thoughts, man. All right. Well, oh yeah, this this is a tough one. I'll play it back. So we defend blind v blind. We call a half pot, open ender and uh, a pair, middle pair even. Hmm, I, it could be possibly aggressive. No diamond though. Uh, yes. So I, I bet, I, I call a half pot Seba on the right table. And he goes to bet like 20, whatever, 4% on, on the turn. And I have to decide if I want to continue this hand or not. So yeah, it's kind of just a tough spot whether you want to continue the turn or not. I feel like with the pair, like say it was a dry open ender, maybe I'm not calling with the pair, I can interact a bit better on a board pair, I can possibly have like, you know, additional outs with like a rivered queen, uh, eight, six or nine. Um, so I decide to take the call and not fold. And then we get sort of cooled on the river, we make a straight, I don't remember what sizing he uses. It's not large, though. So I don't even have to think about this. This is just a snap call. Um, if he bet large, it would be a tough decision, like a diamondless call down on the spot. But if it was a min bet, it just doesn't matter. Um, this hand on the left, I play stupidly. Um, that's the best way to describe it. Did Ubershams limp? Who limped? Limp, limp? Yeah, so it goes limp over limp, small blind folds. And with a big blind checker, we could lead the flop, honestly, on the left. And we end up betting the turn. Uh, for th uh, three quarters pot, two thirds pot, and Sherm's calls after checking back flop, and the river's a nine. So, I, like, I decide uh, to block a bet in this spot because we have a bunch of straights, and this hand is like it bet three bets as a bluff well, um, but it's just stupid because there's no value in betting this hand whatsoever. This hand has showdown against bluffs and is better off check raising. It's it's super obvious. Just at the time, I guess I was, I don't know what else I was thinking. I'm three betting this hand. Maybe I'm just enjoying the music. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm definitely not thinking enough about the spot on the left. Um, I think it's a really, really obvious check raise. But I wanted to be cool and like bet three bet against the reg, you know? So I end up doing that. But uh, what, a, what a better hand would be to bet three bet the river would be a straight with a queen. That would be like the ideal bluff. And so when I do um, bet three bet the river, I don't even three bet large because I'm aware that Hands that I want to value bet and then turn into bluff are not a very common hand to have in this spot. So I'd have to be bluffing with a straight plus whatever. And when you're bluffing with a straight plus whatever, do you want to be um, bluffing with a nine? I think I would rather bet call, like say I had six, eight, nine. I think I would rather like just bet call that. It, it bluff catches super well. Um, but yeah, six, eight queen, I would, I would want to rebluff. How many combos are, are there of that relative to the rest of the hands in my range? I think there's fuck all. So honestly, even, even though I re-raised two thirds, which isn't a particularly large three bet sizing, um, I think I should have re-raised even less because you're just not coming up with that many bluffs in this spot. So yeah, actually, I don't mind the sizing overall. Like at the end of the day, we're trying to make him fold a full house, like pocket sevens or nine, seven or whatever. Um, but he has a reasonable full house to call with. He has pocket sevens, but he also has a queen. So blocking my queen nine, my uh, pocket queens. So yeah, we played it bad. He played it good. Um, and I don't like the bluff. I think I should just check raise, get cooled here, whatever. Uh, the right table hand was also pretty interesting. So I three bet against this 50 BB MP opener, which I'm not, I'm not even sure if this is a good three bet. I, I might just quickly check that. We got low suit. Three bet folding. This feels a bit rough. Hold on. What are we doing here? Oops. Uh, no, we don't want to hide EV. Oh, yeah. So, whatever. All the combos want a three bet. So, whatever. We do play it right. Good to double check. Um, and I end up checking back the flop. It was totally fine, right? Like, we're not really trying to be all in here for 
four and a half times the pot with one of the dudes. So we check, 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 make our flush. Pretty good. Uh, we also have a pair of eights, so board pairing is a little bit less impactful for us. Um, I decide to really just go for one, like to bet two streets here. It's a little bit challenging, I felt, but it is two fish. I could have just gone for two streets of value here. Possibly a bad line. Um, and then this fish bets the river. I consider a raise. Um, but honestly, fish are just scared to even bet a straight here. Like it would be shocking if this guy had a straight for three quarters pot or whatever on the river, 70% pot. Um, so I decide like, even though I should just have him beat all day, I'm going to just flat because he's a bit, people are just more polarized than they should be. And he somehow cold called my three bear with double suited aces, which is quite ridiculous. But anyway, he had the nut flush. On the Queen 8 8 board, do we mix um, pot on the flop with 20%? No, no, no. It was 20% only. I mean, I should have, I, I, do you know what I should have done is I should have used a 25% just to see what's preferred. Yeah. I might have fucked up the sim though and not put pot in. I, I don't really care though. Potting the flop, it seems kind of whaley on this, on this board in this spot with those ranges. So yeah, the way I want to play is just a small bet only. Um, so that's how I would play it. But yeah, if you're curious, you could run it yourself with uh, a few different sizes. You think a solver would rather have potted Queen eight eight rainbow? I don't. I don't think so, man. I don't do not think so at all. Why? Why would you bet eighty five percent pot? I don't understand that. You're committed with your entire range. Why would you not just pot? This right table. Um, I believe I'm. I'm. I don't, I'm just timing down. I'm like, ah, oh, this hand just. You know, it's not very good. I can't improve, et cetera, et cetera. But I think this is actually a pretty good uh, equity denial C bet. Like we have a critical ace. We can have the best hand against like a flush draw. But if we check this hand, can you fucking call a bet? No. Like what, what's a good turn? The one eight in the deck, you know? So yeah, I, I don't really like this check on the flop. I'd rather just have like one and done stab and then play for showdown later. Um, I think it gives us a better chance to win the pot. Obviously, we have a somewhat significant C bet percent on this board as the uh, early position preflop raiser. So yeah, we check. Uh, this guy bets one BB. So I think uh, the turn play is completely standard. Uh, we check call. And the river is a rick. And he was uh, protection betting KK. Like just retarded, pointless line. Um, I limp this hand BVB. I think I check flop and stab turn and win. It's whatever. Uh, we flop top pair in this uh, MP versus button on the left table. I think I probably would check raise this, but it might just check through. Yeah, it goes check, check, 10. I third, and then the river brings in a flush. And I go for the owning. I uh, go to, oh, it pairs the three as well. That's actually quite disgusting. But yeah, he has a bunch of hands like uh, queens, jacks, kings on the river. Um, so I decide I can get away with a, a blocker bet and then possibly three betting as a bluff. <laughs> quite disgusting. Um, but yeah, also reasonable play because he should have to raise flushes against me there. Some flushes at least. Call a three bet on the right and fold to a C bet. Nothing I can do. Okay, this one, we flop top and bottom. I check back, I make three pair on the left. On the right table, it's blind v blind. I raise pre-flop and check all the flop. And we make a jack on the river and I have to decide uh, whether I check raise or value bet. But yeah, on the left, I decide to third the turn and I get raised. So I don't know, man, like I, I just wanted to equity deny against um, hands that have straight draws and shit on the on the left, and he ends up check raising small. So I peel with my hopefully enough outs, and I think he just bets the river and I fold. I think he even half pots it, which is a bit weird, but he's a fish. The right table, I decide to just value bet for the high roll. I don't think I always want to. Um, the reason I think it's important to balance what you do here, like a lot of people would just check raise only, like go for the prey that he has a flush or whatever, a slow played hizzy. Um, it's important because you might like say he slow played a full house right and you bet the river you could be betting with a flush etc he should be raising you with that slow play full house 
Um, and therefore, if that's what it's up to, we want to be um, having this hand to rejam over that. And then you might want to have like a jack plus a, plus a medium flush or something to be bluffing him. Um, and because of that, it's obviously important to mix how you play JJ. Um, so you have enough in both ranges. So yeah, I bet 75 on the river, which I would do with flushes or better. And he's going to just call. And I thought he called me with a dry pocket eight. <laughs> but he had uh, a five. Uh, I just have terrible, terrible eyesight. So I look at this hand, I see pocket eights, which, you, yeah, you can see it on the screen now. And look at my facial expression. I'm like, what is, what is this fucking guy doing? He called me with eights, you stupid cunt. But the stupid cunt is the guy with the bad eyesight, actually. Because him calling down the river, it's absolutely standard. So yeah, whatever. And then I snap donk uh, this in limped pot. Um, but against a decent player like this guy i don't know if i like it to be honest I, it's a fine it's a fine donk we've got the deuce of spades we've got five three of hearts you know we've got a gutty we've got a pair I, I i it's a good play against everyone um i decide to barrel the turn which is whatever but obviously we have a bunch of like full houses and flushes on this turn after we stab flop so it's not the end of the world sometimes i'll better flush on the turn and check it back on the river instead of uh doing a different line so yeah, whatever. I go for it, and he folds. Uh, this one on the left, I, I gotta say, is pretty interesting. So we uh, we raised BBB, yeah, we raised BBB, we see bet the flop for third, we get called. Uh, the turn is a king. Uh, we we could, we, honestly, we could consider barreling this. It's a weird one. Like, we have some kind of strange gut shot, you know? Uh, and, I mean, this is really quite a strange gut shot. Plus we have a king. Like if, if he had like queen jack or ace jack, he might not like this turn facing a barrel, you know? Um, so yeah. Oh, I do actually just barrel it on the turn. Yeah. I think it's an interesting barrel. I thought I ended up bluffing this hand on the river, but I actually bluff it here on the turn. Because what bluffs do you want to have here on the turn on this board? Just some hand like ace, deuce, deuce. I mean, this is also good, obviously. But this hand's kind of similar. It's like a king plus... You have a gutty and like you're going to get peeled for third pot on flop. Um, You're going to get peeled by like every top pair, you know, so unblocking those is kind of interesting too, right? Like he might fold some dry queen, dry jack on the flop, obviously, but dry top pair, it's tough to fold. And now I don't block that, but I do block um, hands that improve on this card. And I do possibly have a live uh, gutty if he's got like two pair and decides to call turn or three pair or a low sizz. So yeah, interesting spot. I, I like the barrel, but just for the frequency, you know, I don't want to be doing it all day. I just had a high roll, kind of interesting barrel. Uh, call on the right table, flop top two and, and pocket tens. Kind of interesting one. A passive line here is not crazy. I find a 44 roll, I'm not really sure on the 44 roll, how I feel about it. So I make the standard bet. Like this hand can obviously bet call a raise pretty easily. And then where the tens are blockers, um, you can probably bluff catch or you could turn into a bluff. Uh, but we actually end up turning a set. So we bet the flop, uh, get called and turn our set. And now we have like a very strange decision um, with two pair pluses, like blocking all of our own outs to improve doing terribly against a check raise, not blocking hands at check raise, etc. Um, I end up, I, I have a high roll, but I don't really think I want to use RNG in this spot where I have four, four cards of information that are extremely obvious. And I decide to pure check the turn. I don't know if this is a play or not. I'd love to find out if there's some post flop uh, in the mastermind, I might check it out. Let's have a look. Is there with turn? Because I don't want to run this myself. It, it has turn. Look, that's amazing. So we want a queen high board. Let's have a look at what's available. Queen. 10, 8. It's not the same. We need the 10 on the turn. So what is it? Queen 8 brick. And uh, there's no queen 8. Queen 8, 5. What, what's similar? I guess king 7, 4. Let's just pray it's there. King 7. 
King seven five. I mean, that's as similar as it gets, right? And then that would be the turn being a nine, right? And we have King seven nine nine. So let's see what happens here. Firstly, how was King seven nine nine for a stab? Yeah, so we do want to check this hand back, but fortunately, 50% of two of the combos, the ones with the back door, nine high flush draw, are betting. So whatever, we stab. I thought about checking back the flop. Anyway, check call. We're going to need... Oh, they have it, the offsuit nine. It's amazing. So we can actually get quite a lot of information. I wonder if he has any donk frequency. I highly, highly doubt it. Yeah, apparently 9%. Fuck off. No one's donking this card. As the, as the pre-flop raiser, it's crazy. Um, so now we have king 997. Are we checking without diamond? Uh, so we actually would rather bet fold. I'm assuming it's a fold. So we bet all in. Oops. Um, yeah, we probably have to fold, right? It's just no way oh, without diamond. Yeah, so apparently it's better for us to bet fold. Um, so I'm just wrong. I'm just wrong. The EV difference is 0.1 BB though. So yeah, as usual, the game is fucking impossible, but we had some logic to our decision. Some logic. And we ended up checking and then the river's a six. <laughs> and then he pots and I actually fold, which is possibly retarded because I unblock some hands that should want to bluff. But then he'd have to be, the thing is, it's a shit rig, and he'd have to be bluffing with like KK or top pair, you know? Uh, so yeah, interesting spot. I think in theory land, we never fold. Do they, oh man, did I delete this thing? No, I didn't. Okay, so we go check, check. And then what's the river? Effectively, it's like a four, six. What could the river be on this board? I guess a four. It's really the only card that's similar. It doesn't complete enough stuff and then pot. And we have nine, nine. All combos call. King, nine, seven, five. Raises a bluff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. It's absolutely crazy. So yeah, I don't know. As expected, unfoldable. Uh, folds. I mean, is this really solved properly? But yeah, so possibly a horrendous river fold, but against human player, maybe okay. So yeah, complicated spot. I don't know, man. Um, I guess if I could go back in time, I would call. I just want to see what he has now. Would he have been bluffing enough? Fuck knows. But I was definitely aware that I should call, but it was more a question of would he bluff enough pair. Um, this other hand on the left, I called against the under the gun. Oh, sorry, an MP opener from small blind. I check called the flop instead of leading or anything else. And I bluff the river and he folds, I believe. On the right table, I check back the flop. I turn a draw. I'm, this, and I make a second fold that's marginal um, against the same player. I guess my read on him is just that he's a bitch, which is a pretty fine read generally. So I check back flop, turn my gutty and low flushy with top pair, and he's going to barrel again river half of the pot on this uh, on this complete. So yeah, tough spot. We lose to all value hands, obviously. Some stuff gets there. Um, if people are bluffing as well, like fish regs like this, they tend to just bet large, you know. Why would they want to size down and give me a chance to call? That That's the kind of mindset that they play. So felt like uh, we'd just always run into the best hand, but who knows? Somewhat exploitative fold, even though in theory it would clearly be close anyway. Um, I overcall this a 7 jack. 
It's a, it's kind of an interesting spot. It goes four way to the flop. Uh, we have top pair and like pocket sevens, you know, so probably live set draw. Some backdoor bullshit as well. Uh, this dude C bets like into three opponents, but he's a fish and fish don't really know how to play poker, you know? So when it's over to me, I decide, I mean, I could even bluff raise, but like my range doesn't really want to raise that much on this board. So I decide whatever, fuck it, fish probably bluffing enough. And I call, uh, we hit the absolute dream card and it goes check, check. And then the river is a deuce. And so my thought here is basically, I have an ace. So the chance of him being able to call my bet is fucking low. It's tiny. And uh, yeah, he might bluff if I check and he might have rivered a hand that has a deuce if I check. So I decide to just go for the check raise. Uh, and on the left table at the same time, I'm not sure if I can three bet this or not. So I just call, but it's actually a three bet. I consider it, I think about it, but then I end up calling like a bitch. And yeah, I should have three bet. Um, the fish actually checks back with nothing on the river, like literally no pair. Uh, so I was, I think I feel fine about my decision on all streets, considering he's going to have that hand. I get min raised in blind v blind here as well. Throw a little shit at the fish reg. Good decision. Do I end up folding at some point in this hand? Yeah, I take the flop check back. And the turn is uh, ace of hearts. I call a bet. Pretty, pretty easy to play hand so far. And the river's just a brick. So I guess I would fold the river, but I think he checks. Um, on the left table, we flatted pre and we're going to end up, I'm not sure, like I could check raise this, not gutty, no blocker, but AD. Kind of interesting spot. I guess like I check call planning on check raise or lead on diamond. I find the diamond after check calling. Do I need to lead like just automatically? I wasn't sure. So I went for the check raise. Um, had I led, I don't know if he would call, but yeah, he has a straight, which he instantly checks back. So I had no opp opportunity to bluff him, which is a bit sad. Um, and then this guy on the right table, instead of just betting the flop, he checks the flop and then bets like the worst turn in the deck. And so we were cooled, but yeah, we got an easy showdown. Three bet these Kings. Um, Pretty sure this is one of the kings that you're happy to three bet in these positions. Why not take a look though? We're even deep here, which probably changes things a bit. What percent of kings are we three betting without an ace? Five percent. So have a look. Queen, queen, jack, jack, ten, ten, nine, nine, ten, nine. Like they're always double suited. Nine, eight. That's our hand. So yeah, even nine, eight without is close EV. That's interesting. But yeah, it needs to be double suited, really nice KK if you're not um, holding an ace in your hand. So we make a standard three bet and then we make, I would say a standard C bet. And there could be some funny run outs where we try to bluff him off ace queen because we hold two kings, but he just folds the flop. Uh, this one is a limped pot with a fish or no, it's a small raised pot with a fish and I end up just donking the flop because I don't really want to check call. And then I hit the turn and I could make a decision. Like if you check and a fish has like two pair draw, you're just stacking them, you know? Uh, but I decided to just uh, potter on the turn, hope to hold. And then on this river, I go for a blocker bet. But honestly, against a whale, I, I should have bet even larger. Like the blocker sizing, it's just too puss, but he does snap me off with any pair. Pocket queens in his hand with a flush draw. So whatever. Not the worst decision, but maybe if I go back in time, I bet larger against the fish. Okay. Does anything happen on the left table? I just lead and take it down. No. Right on this right table, it's single raise. We called a raise. We're stabbing the flop. We get called. Um, we're probably just barreling this card, I guess. No, I don't. I don't actually barrel here. That that surprises me pretty hard. I guess I don't block. I, I mean, a seven blocks 10, seven, obviously, but I don't block hands that check raise and I might have all of my outs live against other hands. But in general, I would say this is just quite a weak check back. On this river, I could just bluff as well. 
But do I want to have this when I'm bluffing? I don't really know. I end up just giving this pot away. Um, had I barreled, I obviously would have won the pot. He has dry AA, like aces with a backdoor that didn't, uh, you know, amount to anything. So I don't know why I didn't barrel the turn. I'm not really sure. I I would say it's gen it's generally a barrel. So kind of a weird check by me. Like, did, was the RNG weird or? Nah, I'm just. If we even roll it high, like, what am I doing? Uh, yeah. So just a bad play, IMO. What's up, Sprout? Oh yeah, this this is nicey on the left, man. So we go for the this is a, we defended preflop, obviously standard. We check raise the flop. Uh pretty standard too, of course. Uh, we're gonna pot barrel this card, and I haven't counted the outs. It might we might have to pot fold it, which is obviously fucking gross. <laughs> but yeah, it's the line. I'm pretty confident it's the line. And then on the river, like he calls the turn. On the river, we have a whack spot because there's two dynamics in play. On one hand, almost all of our bluffs have now made a straight, except for KK, some KK bluffs, except for those bluffs. And that's kind of an interesting sub dynamic, but a lot of our hands that were bluffing make a straight on this river. So in that sense, it's tempting to like third part the river, right? Something like that, because you want him to be in a tough spot with like a dry set. Say he has like um, Jack, Jack, King, you know, you want him to be in a tough spot there. Um, anyway, yeah, so, but then the other dynamic is if I do have King 10 and the river, uh, completes a straight for any 10, like most cunts are just going to shove that because they want to stack the 10, you know? So we've got two weird dynamics and you kind of only play the situation out once. I was very tempted to go for the small sizing. You can see I've got it locked in here, but then at the last second, I don't want to fuck with my timing because I usually time, uh, like one bank at this point. So I just, I just stick it down his throat. Um, because I don't want them to be able to find a reason to call me uh, with that uh, set or whatever hand, since they might say, "Ah, oh, man, if he just had, if he had the nuts, though, he would shove trying to stack my my ten, you know." And I felt like the EV difference between the the sizings on the river was whatever. So if I could go back, I wouldn't have minded the smaller bluff. I think it's also a pretty cool line, and it, it might not change his uh, calling range. Honestly, it might not change his calling range. Uh, for the price like I don't think he ever gets there on the river with a straight and then pays this off uh, sorry and then doesn't just call the river <laughs> you know uh so yeah weird one he's gonna end up tanking I guess folding a set with a king I'm ready to give the cash um, but he does not want it if deeper we go smaller yes uh it's I think you have to mix it honestly bro I think you have to mix between potting and smalling on that river. And someone subscribes just as I bluff him off that pot. So kind of interesting timing there. Yeah, when you can full pot the river, you, you can expect them to have to uh, fold a 10 sometimes for sure. They can't pure call with a 10. I think we take some pots down here. I probably bluff this turn on the right, yeah. Uh, with three bet on the left, which is all good. I, I third C bet we get called. We turn a straight. Uh, sorry, a hizzy, and check. Uh, on the right table we have a pair and NF, and I think I C bet this. I rolled high. Like for me, mixing this makes sense because I can't really draw the line. Uh, on the on the left table we have a decision to make here. And I decide like it's tempting to bluff with some AA and stuff in this spot. So I'll just pot because he's not sure how often I'm going to do those actions. And a different line. I don't, I don't like honestly, a lot of people would check back a straight there to the king. So anyway, yeah, I, I see bet on the right and I get called and we make a flush. We have a pair with it. So I decide this one might slow play a little bit better. And then on the river, I think I just pray and uh, try and slow play. I tr try and go for the check raise because a lot of like this river is terrible. Uh, for a lot of uh, hands that see bet the flop for us, like the turn and river are just super, super bad. And so, yeah, I want to have the Nizizi a bit. And I figure he might be tempted to value better straight um, after I check twice to him. So putting a bit of pressure on him to act. Uh, but he has a pretty easy check back with two pair. 
Um, he does have seven of club, but the, the reason I'm showing this is like, look, this guy's just a whale. Even though he's quite laggy, like he's he's a whale that plays aggressive. Um, he's got retarded hands in his calling range. So I'm just pointing it out. We defend here. We could possibly lead the flop here, three diamonds. We, we could check raise. I check it. I think it's based on the roll here. I would I would do both actions. It goes check, check four though. And like I can obviously, like I play this card as like I'll pot it or check it. And I think that this four checks a lot better than pots because uh, we don't care what the river is. It's almost like having a full house when we have three diamond trips here. So I go for the slow play line. Like he should delayed stab this a bit. Uh, ace on the river, it's definitely a spicer. Um, yeah. But I would have a bunch of hands in my range that would want to bluff. And I would only, I would only expect him... Like, I, th I don't think he's calling any combos that don't have an ace, really, uh, to the river bluff. I would also probably have to bet some ace king to be annoying. Um, so I decide to go three uh, for this size in because when I'm bluffing, like, if I want to bluff him off pocket jacks or queens or whatever that don't have an ace, I think this sizing is totally fine. So, yeah, I, I want to just be balanced and pick one sizing and then try to have enough bluffs and value. And so here's a value hand. Uh, we get called. I think he actually has ace eight with unknown uh, TT. So his hand makes total sense for the passive line. Can't really improve, can win the showdown. Um, we could have got a check raise paid, like considering he had that, but anyway, whatever. This hand on the, on the right, I decided to play it pretty passively. Um, you can't really upgrade your hand and we block him having hands that could call and hands, uh, yeah, basically we just block his continues with this ace and we don't really get any value, um, out of anything else, you know, like when we have queen 10, if we have an ace in our hand. So it felt standard to just play this passively. And then on the river, like, cause it's a four flush river where he now has to value bet, uh, reasonably wide, honestly, he has to bet like probably ace jack plus. Um, at a minimum, ace king plus he's and he's a decent player. Like he's going to be tempted probably to bet other hands like ace three and shit with one spade. Um, so I decide my hand is basically strong enough to go for a check raise, <laughs> and I still would rather um, check raise than bet because I block again with the ace. I block his ability to call me. So while it's annoying when it goes like check check and he has like a king, you're not really getting called that much um, by that hand. And if he has anything else, I'm putting him in quite an annoying spot when I have this much, uh, this many value hands in my range, like, uh, you know. So anyway, he bets three quarters pot and I pump him up. Uh, I think he just ends up snap folding. Um, but yeah, like if he has a four or five or a two pair spade, you know, he's in a lot of trouble here. A lot, a lot, a lot of trouble. But I think he just had nothing and folded, so. Interesting line. Don't know if it's standard. Complicated. What can you do? Possible fish. Uh, heads up with us. Cut off button on the left table. I don't bet with kings. Uh, we do call a half pot bet. I could raise. Like I thought about a weird raise, and then he's just gonna snap barrel the river right on this, on this card. And we don't really interact too much with the board. It's a very small river bet. Like I should possibly consider calling, but. If you look at the rest of my range, um, I don't think that hand needs to call at all. Uh, what have I done here? I opened this hand on the right, and then I think I delayed bluff and just win. I don't know if I like my sizing. On the left table, we called pre, and we just check and lose, I guess. Or do we win? I can't remember. Let's see. I don't think I'm bluffing. Yeah, he just gives it away. 10, 9, 9, 6. It's a bad open as well. Interesting uh, flop on the right. We have king of clubs, kings with a backdoor flush draw. We called a button open. But he just pots c-bets, so I just fold. Feels fine. Jack 10, 9, 7. Uh, I don't know about this hand. It's a little bit shit. All 100 BB, though. Can't blame me. So I open, I call a 3-bet. And we're pretty deep here. Like I could definitely consider a flop donk, but I'm not very happy with my diamond being the seven. If it was the nine, the 10 or the jack, I, I would be a lot happier to consider a lead. In any event, we l rolled low, so I definitely don't like it for the roll. So check, check, seven. So we make two pair. 
And I'm I'm in a bit of a spot. I'm thinking like, shit, should I check? Because this hand can't improve. And like, I could check raise uh, on a 10 or a 7 river. I, I don't know. This hand doesn't really have that much. Uh, I mean, it's not that bad, right? It's got a double gutty. But like, if we pot and get raised, the double gutty is feeling pretty dry. You're obviously not getting raised that often when you pot after check, check. But yeah, I don't know. Weird spot. Decided to bet because it felt more standard and it felt like checking was a risk. But checking could have been an interesting play. And here on the right, I felt like triple suit. My hand could be a fold, but it's actually, it was a really bad fold pre. So yeah, I'm timing out. Big decision for me there. Um, yep, make the wrong one. Yeah, I think I should have. Yeah, I think I should have just see at the flop here. Backdoor straight draw, backdoor flush draw on the right table. I don't, and then I like randomly bluff the turn, but it works. So I would give that hand a bit of a B minus rating. I would rather have just see at the flop with those backdoor draws and the overcard and shit. Uh, here on the left table, we opened pre with this hand, and I decide to just barrel away. Yeah, it's a kind of an unfortunate run out. I think I just blast off because I high rolled the turn. I have a dry blocker, so he's going to have more two parent sets. Possibly even hands that turn a straight that don't follow the turn. And now the river is just, it's just an irrelevant card. Um, I think it's a completely standard bluff. I can't remember if I get a call or a fold here. I might get a fold actually. But yeah, I think after the flop and turn action, the river is absolutely standard. We get a fold. Um, I didn't see about the flop here with this pair of sevens, um, triple flush. I guess that's fine. We don't really want to bet call or raise. And then on the river, he bets small and I could bluff raise with a dry king. Yeah. I think having diamonds here, it could be more interesting than I initially gave it credit for. Like maybe having diamonds here is actually a good reason to raise. Because he's going to bluff more on the turn with those hands. Which means he ends up just having like uh, jacks up two pair way more often for this line. I don't know if the king blocker is good enough for the raise though. And I don't, I, at the time I thought, ah, maybe I just want to bluff with like a jack and stuff like that as well. Like a jack eight. I don't think I do actually. I think I'd rather never have the jack. I think I want him to have jack three, jack deuce, jack nine, etc. every time. And bet fold. So yeah, I actually retrospectively would have rather seen a bluff there. I think the hand was a good bluff. Yeah, not really an interesting question, man. I wouldn't hate over limping this fish. Uh, I didn't really see it. Could you explain why 10, 9, 8, 5 double suited is a fold under the gun? I mean, did I fold it or you just want to talk about it in general? I didn't fold it. Pretty sure I didn't fold it, right? Is 10, 9, 8, 5 double suited and open under the gun? The ace, 8, 6 mono, you should range, you could range check. Mm, I don't think so. I think you want to see but like 15, 20%. Maybe even slightly more, man. Maybe even like 25%. I miss it. I, know. I think you folded. I did not fold 10, 9, 8, 5. Double suited to my knowledge, man. Um, I don't think it's a fold either. It could be. Like sometimes the, those hands get a bit dusty, right? But I would open it under the gun and I would assume it's an open. If it's with 10, 9, 8, 4, I think it's a fold. 10, 9, 8, 5, I think it's an open. Oh, no, it's not. It's 07 loser. I would open it and not feel too bad though. But yeah, 8 4 would be terrible, right? 2 1 loser, and 8 6 is obviously the best hand in human history. So, yeah, it's right on the fence, the 10 9 8 5. I would open it. Now, now that I know, I wouldn't open it. Ace 8 4 mono under the gun versus EP is 6.8% Siva. Okay. Well, fair enough, man. It's a hard spot to play correctly, but uh, I felt like for hands I could have that bluff. That one was all right. If I knew that it was a 7% CBIT, I probably would never bluff a dry jack blocker on the flop. So yeah, I guess I would have checked if I knew that. But at the time, I didn't. At the time, I figured it would be more like 20, 25 even percent CBIT. Because at the end of the day, the ace high board is pretty good for the man that has uh, most of the aces. 
has a lot of their hands that could could decide to continue drawing very dead. Um, ease of play is pretty reasonable as well. But yeah, I mean, the game is impossible, you know, bro. <laughs> so don't expect me to know shit like that. All right, what do we got here on the left? Oh yeah, we got a weird multi-way spot over here where we flop top pair. We got a combo draw, right? We got top pair, over cards to the nine, and we've got a flush draw, but it's queen high on the board where the ace high flush draw could have us in pretty bad shape. So I decided to take the slow play line on the left. Uh, on the right table, I overcall preflop. I think it's totally standard. We high roll, but I would never donk this board. Um, so I check and pray uh, that I can get action. I actually for the for the roll, I don't really like that I raised here for the roll. I think I should trap some amount of this and for a 20 roll, I think I should check call. So I think I make a mistake on the right table by raising the flop. Uh, on the left, what's happening? Is he going to bet or big blind overcaller is tanking? He bets 75%. Is it? No, 70% pot. Um, I call. Obviously standard. So yeah, we check raise the right and I think he folds. The left one is actually interesting. So this guy bets 70% on the turn. And then the river is like kind of a brick, but it's sort of not because there's two of us in there, including a fish who would have lots of different hands that can make a straight here. And this dude's going to pump the river, just pump it for pot. And I think I should have considered uh, like a small raise bluff. Just like making it 65 here or 60 or whatever. Um, it's not the worst ever. But like with an ace, maybe I don't want to have that. Maybe I want him to have aces up like, you know, all day. And so I really just don't want to have an ace in my hand. I'd rather bluff with some combo draw with a six or an eight, something like that. Uh, anyway, I, I think about calling. Like obviously this hand um, beats bluffs and does block the nuts. And I'm not sure how polarized he is. I don't think it's insane, though, for him to just pot the river um, with a strong value hand, like a set with a straight blocker. I don't think that's insane at all. Um, anyway, I just take the easy decision and just fold this hand. It's kind of whatever. But a little bit interesting of a spot. Donking on 10-5-2 rainbow from a small blind can't be too bad as it hits your range better than theirs. I, I don't really agree. The only hands that hit, besides hands that contain pocket tens with broadways or an ace, um, are double pocket pair hands. So even though we can probably have some like less than 10% leading range in theory, I think it's hard to execute it like with all the bluffs. So I just range check. I don't think it costs us that much EV to do that. So better to not fuck up your own strategy from the start. You know, if you give yourself an extra node where you can just punt, now you're losing EV randomly. Um, so I, I don't agree. Yeah, well, uh, Makari, yeah, I think you're onto it there, man. I think it's mainly about the villain's flatting range in general. Like, they have all this KK, right? And what is KK on that board? It's a king high fucking flush, you know? Or a hand that can be aggressive against you. So, yeah, with that in mind, I guess a lot of um, uh, passiveness makes sense. Yeah, that'll definitely stay in my mind, man. So, thanks for the, in the info there. Although, I should probably double check it. You know, you're just scamming me into checking this board now. I'm just playing. All right. Uh, we decide to check back. Oh, this is an interesting one. Yeah. We decide to check back uh, King King 7 here with 5-5 five, five at the back door. And this guy comes out uh, potting the turn, I, I believe. Oh, no, he doesn't pot. And we pump him up. So, like, kind of a sick spot, right? Because of the two of us, who can have kings here? You know? Him. We don't really be checking back kings, you know, on this on this flop in position. So if he wanted to make the crazed bluff, you know, the big re-raise here, repping the KK, he could. And our hand is not doing too well against kings, you know, this is doing pretty bad. But he, life is easy, he just calls, uh, he does not donk the river. Do I want to randomly bluff with this now? Like I was value raising the turn, do I want to now bluff? No. So we just take the showdown and we lose. We, he had uh, king 10-4, three pair. Now on the right table, I check and call with my gut shot backdoor flush draw. Kings on the 10 6 7 rainbow. Uh, the turn is not great, and I think we get muscled off. Oh, no, it's not. The turn is actually bad, but he checks it back. 
And now I have a weird decision. Like, do I want to be uh, like turning my hand into a bluff? Like when I have a lot of one pair hands on this run out. And I actually do. I actually do want to play like that. Um, so I end up value betting this hand. Uh, I think I kind of randomly clicked on the sizing, maybe a halfy. Interesting spot. Oh no, I bet even bigger because I didn't want to use um, a sizing I wouldn't use. So yeah, I bet super marginal spot. Kind of interesting play. Uh, on the left table, I checked back uh, with the ace I flush and a nine. I think I didn't pay enough attention to the RNG though. I think I should have seen it. I think it was just a 75 roll and I should have just seen it. Um, anyway, I bet the turn. I think he folds. Uh, this left table, I flatted pre. It's a good flat. Um, I could lead the flop. I feel like this hand doesn't have that much reason to lead. I, I could mix a check raise though for sure with a check call. It goes check, check, jack. Um, I don't bet. Seems totally fine, yeah. And then this river runs off. So after he checks back two times, I think it's tempting to use a block sizing with a bunch of hands. And this one certainly makes sense to me. So I go for it and we chop it up. On the right, I three bet and flopped a pretty busted hand. Uh, I, I low roll, but I don't think this hand wants to check ever. So I just see bet, he folds. Defend the left. Uh, I think we pop bluff and get called and I pile in the river. Yeah, and the reason I pile this river is he's, he's going to have more bluff catches that also have straight draws. So he's going to have like a queen, queen, nine, etc. And with that kind of hand, he's like blocking a lot of my quote unquote bluffs. So I think having these all low card, and even though I have diamonds, I don't really interact with a lot of the diamonds that he's going to hold. Um, so yeah, I end up uh, deciding to bluff here because he's going to have like a straight draw blocking bluffs quite often. But he just snaps me off with aces, seven, nine. So I mean, I think it's a fine call. Fine and dandy. Uh, on this right table, I actually three bet pre. And I believe I check back two times uh, with the nuts. So just doing a little range balancing here on the right table. I think he checks and I pot it. And he has like all low cards, right? Like six, five, four, three or something. It's a little bit of a marginal open from MP. Six, five, four, three single, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, how bad is it? It's losing 06, 07, 08. It's whatever. Single suit. I don't think he was triple suited. But anyway, he um, ends up check calling the reverse of pop bet. It's a pretty easy decision, to be honest. We could have won more money had we bet earlier, possibly. But yeah, so he has 6, 5, 4, 3 single. So a bad open, but not the end of the world. There was a mergey bet with the 4-3, yeah. I mean, I like to do that. I like to show up with a hand where your opponent regrets calling you, you know, make them think a lot. Especially when you're bluffing in a bunch of spots, you want to have more value hands to deter your opponents from calling you. Mm, the problem is on Sundays, I'm usually doing like family stuff or basketball, you know. I don't have time to sit and play a fucking poker tournament for six, seven hours, you know. And I don't really enjoy tournaments, but maybe one time it could be fun, like once every six months or something, stream a few tournaments. I think I start stabbing on this right table in the limped pot. I get called, I stab again. I think I get called again. And then I, d I decide to bluff this river, sort of for a similar reason um, to I bluffed uh, that other one where I got called by ace, ace, nine, seven on this right table, is because I don't really block him having the drawy hands himself, you know, like Jack X of clubs, like he's not loving a call on the river with Jack X of clubs. If he has like a nine, 10, king, king, 10, king, king, nine, like just random, like flush draw hand, etc. with pair, gutty, like he's going to want to fold like all that shit on the river. So I think I pop bluff. I can't remember if he calls me or not. I'm thinking about checking. I'm like, no, this is, this is stupid. I unblock so much stuff. Let's just bluff. And my hearts don't really block many draws. So maybe he snaps me, maybe he snap folds, he snaps me. Oh yeah, he calls me with jack 5-6, so like dry 3 pair. I actually think it's like a well-played hand by the fish. Although the turn call, eh, the turn call's fine, yeah. He could also raise, honestly. 
Um, so yeah, I think the fish played well a couple times there against me. This guy C bet, and I really don't want to fold with like all of my backdoor draws here on the flop, even though like I'm often fucking cooked, you know, having unders to the nine. So I check call, I turn a draw, he pots it, I call and we make it. And I make a point about um, being sure you bluff here with like aces up two pair because you really, you, you can't have enough bluffs otherwise. And so I do lead for three quarters because I think I'm going to still be reasonably value stacked. Even though I know I know what hands to bluff with, I think we show up with the value more um, after big blind defend preflop. Uh, so yeah, uh, we bet any folds. No dice. The left table here was kind of interesting. We could have just see bet the flop, back to a flush draw an eight and the ace of clubs. I could also delay bluff, like delay third here. It just felt weird to bluff with an eight. So I decide, fuck it, I'll check raise him on the turn. Um, but it goes check, check, I believe. Oh no, he pots it, right? Yeah, it just changes my thought. Right, so I was going to check raise the turn, but because he potted, I think I just I fold. Yeah, pretty understandable. I think I donk this right board. Does he call? No. How much more we got? Wow, we're still playing. Okay. Defend pre on the right. I think this was a bad call. I think it was too loose. And we end up check raising and winning on the flop. Uh, on the left table, we called a three bet and we fold to a half pot, retarded size C bet. Um, I, what do I do? I flat a pre flop raise on the right. And just lose. Check all a pair of jacks on the left and check fold to a really weird play, like pot barreling on a brick on like a, a, a rainbow card that changes the board a little bit. It's a weird, weird play from him. Uh, on the river on the right, again, I'm in a spot where I want to mix what I do. He's the uh, cutoff preflop raiser. I'm the small blind flatter. So I want to mix what I do here for a 45 roll. I guess it's kind of a close roll. I end up checking. Yeah, understandable. Sometimes re-rolling in that spot is a better way to decide than just timing down and not being sure. If one is really good close flop, do you agree you can open slightly more hands than the charts say? Uh, yeah, obviously. But like, is this how you want to build your game? Like, do you want to fuck with your memory of what the ranges are? Because when you're playing against good players, which might eventually happen, um, would you would you rather just be like, oh, look, it's this hand I normally open. I'll open it because I'm probably better at poker than that guy. You know, it's not really a great thought for too long. Things like this don't even matter, honestly. Like, you're better off just knowing shit. So I checked it over to that guy and he ends up tanking and I put him on the checked back AA. But he actually just has a hand he should have barreled the turn with. Um, he had an open ender, a live po pocket pair, so like could make a hizzy on a nine, obviously. Seven could even be a good card for him. And um, he's got the nut flush draw. So I don't know why he checked back this turn card. But he did. And then he also checked back the river, which is whatever, really. He doesn't beat anything, but I don't know if his hand's that good of a bluff. This hand's interesting. This fish leads into me here for half pot. Leads into two of us on this board, random. Uh, I call, the turn's a nine. It, it goes call, over call on the flop, and then the fish halves the turn. And I decide that my king, uh, ten, and seven are live often enough to call. So I call, and then he pots the river as a bluff. Oh, sorry, not as a bluff, just pots the river, and I never know if he was bluffing or not. I make the fold. feel pretty fine folding that to a fish. Oh, this hand is insanely weird. Yeah, on the left, check this out. So we've got 8844 four single. Um, this dude seabed's tiny. I make a peel here. I think it's pretty fine. It's a good hand to have and bluff later on. And it's also a hand that can make um, some nutted outs against other hands. So I think it's a good in-position peel, especially for the small sizing. Could also even honestly raise the flop, but I don't think I would really raise this board. Um, the fact that this Eurosoft guy overcalled the flop like, what could he overcall the flop with that we beat right now? Like, really, what could he overcall? He could have, I guess he could have, like, ace, queen, queen, overcall the flop. Uh, that kind of a hand. He could have uh, top pair with double backdoor flush draw. I guess he could overcall the flop with top pair and just, like, live cards in a BDFD sometimes. But anyway, I felt like that turn, it just, like, hits him really hard after I've already called flop and we've seen a C bet. I don't think he would overcall the flop that wide. 
Um, so the river he snap checks, the other guy ends up checking. And uh, yeah, I just don't have a good read on what to do in this spot. Like Urasov could just have quads plus as his range, you know? And the other guy could be thinking that and therefore be checking with AA. So I don't know what they're doing. It felt like there wasn't that much value in the bet. So even though it might look retarded to check back like, a, you know, a nutted quote unquote hand. Um, I, yeah, I check for info and Urasov did have the double backdoor flush draws, backdoor straight draw ace overcalling, which is obviously fine. If I was Urasov, though, I would absolutely bluff the river. I don't know why he checks. Uh, and then the other guy was just seabedding, like, range, probably. Just seabedding a random hand. You just do whatever is best for you, man, when it comes to remembering preflop. Like, uh, we all have our own different tricks to remember stuff. Um, I, I don't remember everything, obviously. I think the game is impossible. I think this game is way, way, way too hard for a human. Um, but it's a cool game. And we just try and do the best that we can. Like the more you play, the more you look stuff up, the more you remember, the more you have good intuition for what makes sense in what spot. So that's all I can really do is just get along with my grind a bit. But yeah, there's no perfect system, man. Yeah, he is kind of just a, I would say, I guess just a badly played hand. Um, Check, check on flop. And I decide that this is definitely a sizing I want to be using sometimes. This hand really makes no sense, though, to do this with. I think I'm honestly just better off um, either check calling or check raising as a bluff. The check raise bluff with this hand is actually sounding quite cool to me now. Because you block the nuts with the king. And um, obviously, we've got a lot of outs. So... Yeah, I, I actually think check raising, but I pot like one for thin value, basically with queen nine, like kind of just to fuck him. And he has the hand that I'm absolutely dead against. Uh, so anyway, we go check check on the river. And he's got the queen 10 nut hearts. <laughs> so we just had like a dry gut shot, basically. Oh man, this is too annoying of a question. Would you call down ace king on ace king x king x run out versus triple barrel jam after preflop raises c bet three when plo fifty zoom in the SRP? Yes. Um, I decided to peel this against this whale. Like it's obviously not a theory call, but it's pretty close. And the guy's a whale, so I just wanted to play more pots with him on the left. Flop the joint, and I decide um, just to pray that he can call, basically. So pot twice. Because, like, whales who check back this flop, like, they, they don't have air, you know? So, yeah, I just pot him twice. Pray. I, I think he might have called the river. can't remember. Getting jammed on here would be interesting. I, I think I would have to call because he could be chopping. What mouse am I using? Razor Mamba Elite. Three bet this hand, 250 BBD on the right table. I end up taking a passive line, checking back two times and hitting a jack. So pretty nice. And I end up thirding the river in position. Because I think we're playing more passively with a lot of our overpairs. But I still want to bet a bunch of them on the river. I don't know if I like thirding for that. It's an, kind of a tough one, to be honest. I'm not sure how I feel. Uh, on the left table, we actually had an interesting spot. I'm going back for it now. So uh, we're 150 with two regs. Yeah, someone pointed this out to me the other day that this is probably making it bad. So off 100 BB, we would lose almost two big blinds or slightly over two big blinds by not squeezing this 100 BBD. But 150 BBD actually might be a problem. So what are the positions? So we got cutoff button as small. Pot call as small blind is uh, short, obviously. But let's just have a look at a range of AA. So AA here, uh, we are calling 1.5%, but it does include some of these bad rainbow ones. So we want aces without AA. And it's only 1% of these aces flat call. Uh, our hand seems to be neutral EV. So let's have a look at ace ace. Seven deuce, dollars RB, and let's compare the difference. Uh, so our hand is like literally neutral EV, whether we would three better or not. 
But let's have a look at Aces Rainbow without AA, just in general. Um, hide EV difference. Yeah, actually, hold on. So any of these hands that are calling, like nine dudes, eight dudes, king seven, whatever these hands, the EV is like almost negligible, almost negligible. So I don't think it's a big deal to try and call. And if you want to look at the specific spot, like we do have this one fish. I mean, he's a fish too. We have this one fish who's uh, what's it called? Shorter. And if the new, if I handle zero EV, if everyone's one fifty deep, it's going to become a, a winning play when there's one guy who's short. So I definitely don't mind um, the three bet. Obviously, we're just going to pray for folds pre would be nice or um, hope for a good flop. I would say we certainly found a good flop. So we've got SPR 2.5 with one dude and 1.5-ish with another dude. Uh, Ace of clubs on the jack six deuce. I mean, we're going to shove fucking all day on a jack six deuce board anyway, but we've got such a good hand to do with Ace of clubs and a, and a bottom pair. So yeah, we shove it in. We are not in front, unfortunately. Our opponent has flopped with his disgusting rags. Top pair flush draw. So we call it off. See the bad news. He's a 62% favorite to, uh, to hit. We're holding. We're sending. And I tell him to go fuck himself. For some reason. Vertical mouse. Well, I don't even know what that is, bro. Vertical mouse. The Dimith Dimorphy, I don't think I would agree with much, man, um, that you've been saying. So if I read a long question with do you agree, um, let's just default to no, I don't agree. I may think stuff, but agreeing with someone is not generally what I do, man. But in general, you're making a lot of excuses like for your actions. And I think this is a common low stakes thought. And I definitely don't agree with doing that. This right table hand is super weird, by the way. Um, so let me just double back to pre. I open it pre into the whale. Queen 10, 9, 6, single, MP. Like, I'm fine with this hand being a losing preflop open. I'm sort of targeting down the whale here. Giving a little bit of an EV up to the regs uh, for my time, for my troubles. So let's see what kind of EV we're talking about. Queen, 10, 9, 6, triple high. We are losing 05. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to pay 05, 07 uh, to open this hand into the boys. So yeah, we get the two callers. We flop, repair dry. We actually have 10 of diamonds, which is a little bit relevant. 10 of diamonds. This hand's probably the most interesting hand of the session, actually. So I decide to check back the flop. I'm on a bit of a roll for checking back uh, and raising the turn. So let's see if that's what happens here. We check back three pair turn, two flush draw card. And uh, does he pot? He pots and gets flattered. I pump it in. You know, I could consider raising smaller because then the whale can back raise, you know? I should have actually thought about this. Because say I raise small, say I raise to... Yeah, it's actually a huge mistake. I put so much pressure on him. Look how deep we are right now. Look how deep we are. We're 275 BB effective with this guy. Say I raised it here, there's 20 BB left, to 30 total BB. Um, that would give the whale or 29.9 20, BB. If I raise to that sizing instead of my pot raise, um, then this guy here, he would call knowing that if the whale clicks it all in, I can repot and he's burned um, 30 BB. So this might have actually folded him off way more hands. Even if the whale was just going to over overcall instantly, I I think that that would be a much better play than the one I chose. I just went for the pot raise. Um, yeah. So I, I don't like it. I, I think I should have gone for the 29.9 BB or whatever uh, raise play. Anyway, this guy is going to call and the fish is going to fold. And then the dude is going to donk pot. And we have the blocker. So we have the magical 10, the absolutely critical 10 uh, blocker. And he's, he's leading full pot. And so I decided, like, I was basically, like, going to snap call. You know? It's a pretty good blocker to have. It's, like, really one of the best cards I can have here. But we've got a problem. And the problem is he has to call the turn, raise, uh, with a hand uh, that he's ending up bluffing. What is his range like pre? Well, most small blind flats are really, they're, they're like, 
high card heavy hands, like specifically a lot of broadways. So on this river, he'd have to have called with a hand that can bluff. And those hands are like, uh, I mean, 10 8 gets there, right? So 7 8 5, 4 5 8, like these kind of hands. Man, they don't really play them pre flop. Like he'd have to have like ace high spades with 7 8 or 4 5, or, you know, a mix of three of those cards. That's all I beat here. And most of his range is going to um, is gonna be centered more around the high cards. So for full pot price, even though I have blocker, I just think his preflop range pushes him to having value way more often, and I end up tank folding. But it was an interesting, um, interesting spot, man. You are not looking for folds when you pot AA, but you're looking for lower stack to pot ratios and get AA in many flops. What, what are you trying to tell me here, man? Like, I know how to play the game. <laughs> Looking for folds pre is fine though with that exact hand. I'm pretty sure you have more EV when they fold pre than when you go to a post flop pot. Um. Ah, no, it's all good, man. Yeah, yeah, it's all good, it's all good. Anyway, yeah, what do you guys think of this fold? Uh, what do you think, uh, Kuki? What do you, what do you think about this fold, man? Because basically it comes down to just his pre flop range. It's the read on the preflop range. Was this guy calling a bunch of 785 hands? You know, was he? A785 double, hey man, it's a good call. I would also have it, I would also bluff it. Don't get me wrong, but for full pot on river, how important is this 10 of diamonds? I mean, I gotta say, if I had the 10 of spades, I think I probably would have ended up calling. I don't know if that's retarded or not. Does that make any difference? Hmm. No, it probably doesn't, because it was check, check, check on flop. I guess he leads more, right, with those hands, with 10 of spades. Maybe the Ten of Diamonds is better and I'm just a whale. Does not having a spade matter? Uh, it's slightly, yeah. Yeah. I mean, with, I mean, it's weird, right? Like, it's good, you know? It's good to not have the spade because that's exactly the kind of hands that are bluffing on this river. Like, if we had a king or ace of spades, it, I mean, king's interesting. An ace of spades would be an absolutely terrible card to have in our hand. Like if I had queen nine ten with ace of spades, like that would be the fastest fold. I wouldn't give a fuck about calling with that hand. But yeah, I don't know, man. Let's leave it at marginal, marginal spot here. The other thing to think is like, would he would he pot value? Like he has it here so often. It's a really bad bet size. But one thing you can do against people who pot when they have it too often is just fold heaps because they're fucking themselves over. Like, take the 10 of diamonds out of our hand for a second. Just give us a random bluff catcher here. If he's actually potting with his value and with his bluffs, we can just let him, we can just let him have the pot like every time. It just does not matter. You know, what we did was we gave him um, a spot on the turn where he has to call with a draw and he may not have the correct odds to make this call unless he can make it up for implied odds, right? And so when he pot bluffs the river, if he's actually betting range and uh, and value for the sizing, he just doesn't have the implied odds at all to call the turn, you know? So we're beating him on the turn um, if that's what's happening on the river. But he might have been a, a fish reg. Like, he, obviously, these low stakes regs are pretty bad in general. And he might have been betting like half or 75 with the value and pot with the bluffs. In which case, obviously, we should be fucking snapping his neck, you know? So we, we don't know, but there's a possibility we could have made even more money off this guy um with a river call uh however i think the main fuck up of the hand is the turn sizing i should have looked at um the fish's stack size i should have used that to pressure the reg's range um because the reg would realize i mean assuming his brain isn't completely switched off that if the fish jams here in the back and i re-jam for fucking 200 something bb he is cucked so he might just be donating 30 bb into a dead pot for him um, super often, which would make him want to fold more of his range. So I could have used less money to get more fold equity with a hand. I'm extremely happy to see two folds uh, when I raise the turn, you know? So yeah, I think I think we fucked it up. KK78, KK7545. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of bluffs, man, that, that um, someone could have in their range, but it really depends on pre- like a lot of people don't play those KK uh, versus MP out of position from the small. Um, and then the hands that come to mind, right? Are this ace seven, five, four, ace eight, seven, five, these kind of hands, double suited. That's, that's fuck all combos. You know, it's really, really fuck all combos of hands. So yeah, he'd need to have the Kongs. 
the Kongs withdraw bluff more often. So yeah, if we could go back in time, maybe I call just to see what he had so we can know for the stream. Um, but in the moment, wasn't too sure. And I felt more about like just the general preflop defending range hitting, uh, hitting this run out a lot more. And for full pot, it felt like therefore I could fall. But maybe with the blocker, maybe you just can't, you just can't muck it, even if it's a pot spot and all this weird shit going on. So yeah, fuck knows. Fuck knows, man. Yeah, I actually think um, maybe I didn't think enough about the kings with a gutty and a flushy. I mean, does he really call though? Like I raised the turn pot. Does he really? Yeah, I made it too easy for him, right? Like say say he had kings gutty flushy and I raised small. He's getting like three bet all in a bunch. He would not call the turn raise. I think I just fuck up the hand and deserve to lose it. But yeah, maybe I should have called the river. Just annoying that I went from snapping. You know what I mean? I went from snapping to folding. Well, the thing is, JV, I can just hit the river too. You know? So I can have 10A and King 10 with hands that raise the turn. Um, what would I call? The thing is, it depends on my read. Like if I'm kind of right about my read about his preflop range, then when he's potting, he just has it far too often. I can fold almost everything and it's fine because he just has it too often. I would obviously never fold 10-8 though. Oh uh, yeah, and I actually accidentally donk in this in this one for full pot. And I check raise bluff a fish here. I, I actually kind of hate this play. So it's like a min raise pot. Um, I check raise the turn. I don't mind this. But then I pop bluff the river. I kind of hate this. Like the check raise on the turn, I don't mind. The pop bluff on the river, I kind of don't like it because a lot of the time he has like uh, the AA. He might just bluff jam it, you know, with the ace of hearts. So I might have just outplayed myself in that pot. Oh yeah, I checked back a top set and raised the turn here. <laughs> it wasn't too interesting. This hand's pretty weird. Um, so I fuck up at the start. I roll an RNG there for a lead. Um, but I, I thought it was heads up with the button. I actually really don't like the lead without a diamond here um, into two players. So I lead and get called by the big blind. So he's got a pretty strong continuing range. And the turn's an ace. I can for sure barrel this card, but I was just thinking about how my hand performs when it barrels. Like I'm running into NFD a bunch, which I'm pretty dead against. Uh, yeah, so I decided to actually check and then if he bets any reasonable sizing, fold. With this hand, I would auto barrel if I had one diamond, but I didn't. I felt like it was not the best play for me to just blindly barrel in a spot like that where I don't block any of the stronger hands. If I had like the wrap with a pair, I'd feel good about barreling, but without it, with an irrelevant uh, self-blocking card, I felt like check folding was all right. On this right table, I check back two times and I decide I want to value about the river, but I think he just folds. Oh yeah, this hand's weird. Yep, so we check back um, this middle pair gut shot because I don't really want to bet call it. We turn two pairs with the 10 of clubs and a gutty. So we obviously call the bet, Mr. Kvika. And then the river is a queen. And he's going to bet. I think I low roll, but I just decide I want to bluff this hand anyway. This hand's kind of interesting to call a river bet as well. It's definitely not like retarded. He bets a weird size, like a manually typed size, 95% pot. Weird, but we low roll, but we just bluff him anyway. And realistically, I don't think I'm actually bluffing that often in the spot. So I end up sizing uh, a bit smaller. And he's going to time for a very, very long time and fold in the end. So 
don't really know what it means. I guess it means he had value. Like maybe he had pocket fours or whatever. And folded. But yeah, he folded. Thanks. Appreciate it. Cbet 9988 in the single raise blind v blind pot. I see bet these hands a lot because it, it sucks to just go check check and they hit this, you know, like a random pair. I think I checked the turn considering a check raise. It checks through and then the river's a king. And I beat some peels on the flop and I lose to some other shit. And I don't know. It's marginal whether you want to bluff this or not. I take the showdown. And it's a cooler. Pocket tens. Nice hand. Uh, this table on the right, our opponent has checked back twice against us. I think I just make a small value bet. Uh, sorry, yeah, small value bet on the river and get paid off by King Jack, which is whatever. It's okay, I guess. Maybe raising would be better from, from him than calling. This hand's interesting. I think about leading, but then um, I think my hand, it really hates being raised when it leads. And then I think about check raising, but my hand really doesn't um, block any continues. And uh, there's tons of bad turns where we uh, we would want to barrel with our check raises, but this hand doesn't interact. So I decided to just check call the flop and uh, like probably get bluffed off on the turn. But we turn middle two pair um, with the double guard shot. So we check, I think he fires it up. And we end up paying him off. And he had a hand that we were super dead against as well. I don't like lead bluff the river or anything. I think he had pocket queens with spades. Is that right? Yeah, so we were just dead as shit. Probably played it fine though. Three bet the right table. Oh, this hand is weird, man. Yeah. So I three bet the right table. I see bet. And we're going to see the in position player raise this board. So not really a standard um, standard spot. And I have to decide whether I want to like three bet this hand all in. That's an option for me. Uh, just call, uh, leaving SPR like slightly over one or possibly fold. I feel like my hand's just too good to fold basically. I'm not sure if re-raise all in was great or not. Um, so I just go for the call. I considered donking this turn. SPR is like one. Like what, donk jam? It's an option. Maybe Honestly, maybe do just donk jamming was a better play here. Because um, like I can fold him off draws here. Like say he say he had a, a straight draw on the flop. He can just be folded off that hand. Um, but I check. Don't really know if I like this. Uh, I don't really know what raising range they have as well. It's The whole hand is fucking stupid, to be honest. But anyway, it goes check, check. And then on the river queen, I have to decide what I want to do. And like my range is just so fucking strong uh, for calling the flop. Like, am I really going to bluff with a jack for a small bet size? I doubt it. Am I really going to have like just a dry draw, like random overcards and a gut shot? You know, am, am I going to have stuff like this? So I decided I could just um, bet small and crush him, you know, because a lot of the hands that he might raise is like one jack with live cards, something like that, trying to take control of the pot. And he snap folds. So whatever. Possibly a bluff with a three. Interesting hand though. This one is uh, also a bit funny. I check back the flop with my flush uh, and pair in single raised blind blind. Turns a six, so some straights get there. I block those. Uh, he bets and I call. Three quarters, I think. Yeah, three quarters call. And then on the river, he pots it and I consider the raise. And then I'm just thinking, hmm, this guy's pretty polar. My fives are blocking the straight anyway. Maybe there's just not enough value and I end up flatting and of course my opponent had the nitty king high flush so he wins the min yeah i'm not sure what's going on in this hand uh, over here i decide to not check fold um to the third pot seabit and limp limp cord blind v blind i'm not sure if it's probably just a bad play you should probably just fold the flop honestly Turn to queen, I think it goes check, check, and then the river, I have a decision. I end up checking, and he bets half pot, and I just comment on, like, because he snap bets, yeah. He just snaps off a half pot bet. I just comment on how obvious it is that people have value when they take this line. But this retarded sizing and stuff like that as well, he's just representing exactly 4-5 or a low flush. And I don't block it at all, but the odds are decent. And if he actually bluffs this sizing, he could easily overbluff for hands that he C bets and then bets again. 
So it feels like he has it. I don't block it, but I end up just slotting to kind of prove my point. And yeah, it's just a face up whale, basically. As you'd expect from a random busto motherfucker. This QQ spot, it's not really good. I decided to take it because the dude's a whale and there's a fish BB. We get squeezed, we decide to call. And I, I actually go for a lead here, a half pot lead. With, we're deep with the three better. So this puts a lot of pressure on him. And with the fish, uh, like, I mean, I am honestly might have to call off the jam. Like if I lead in the fish jams, I might have to call it off. Sucks though. Um, but I feel like this just uh, puts the three better in a tough spot. Um, so I decide leading because I can't really check raise here, you know, and to use my uh, my blockers in any relevant way, I'd have to start leading. So I, I like it. It's kind of a weird lead. It's kind of cool. But this dude just, oh, I have it pot. So yeah, we get fucked. Oh, yeah, the Jack 943. I don't know about the open, honestly. It's probably pretty shitty. Yeah, it's just a bad open. How bad? Losing 0.1. So I'd say that's bad enough not to open it. That's pretty fucking bad. So I open it. Um, I don't see but the flop. And now I pot stab the turn after they check to me. I think that's totally fine. This king 10, 9, 8, um, 10 high suit. I also flat this. And it's a good flat, even in theory. They all check to me. And I turn a gut shot and just lose. Yeah, it's all good. Nothing super interesting. Oh yeah, I fold this hand, ace five, three deuce, figuring it's not a good enough hand to overcall, but it's actually a good hand to overcall, so it's a bad fold. And then I think that's it for the end of my session. Done. Yeah. So that was about it. Um, what did we learn? We made a couple of mistakes. Uh, we overcomplicated a spot in that four bet pot early, the one we ran the sim on, where I could just jam the turn and I didn't. Honestly, I kind of forgot that the SPR was that low. I think I would have considered it if I did. And then what was the other one? That Queen 10. Yeah, the Queen 10, 9, 6. I would play it differently if we went back in time. I would change my turn sizing. I would think more about the fish's stack depth and the reopening of the action spot. I think it's a great thing to consider in PLO. Um, and then I guess, I, honestly, I would call the river if I went back in time. I would just call the river. I don't I don't really know why I folded. I think I just like stumbled onto this thought in the moment like, aha, his preflop range means he's so value stacked because he has to just hit more. Like if you look at his whole range. But I think with the blocker effect, it changes things. And I didn't consider enough of the pocket kings he could be calling pre. You know, he could be calling king king 7-5 single suit there versus MP and shit. You know, have his flush draw, call, and then like absolute, oh, look, I have kings, a uh, pot. You know, like it's the kind of thought that leads to him using pot as a sizing. You know what I mean? Like, I think if he hit, he probably just bets 75 I, uh, or something like that. Two thirds pot. So I think I sort of fucked up because he just snapped pots. It's like a, how a pussy bluffs. Do you know what I mean? He's like, oh, I have to bluff our pot. Because ah! he's scared. He doesn't want to risk like sizing. Uh, down because he has it a lot. He doesn't want to risk that. He just clicks the pot as fast as possible. It'll look strong if I click it, you know, like this desperate low IQ bluff. So I actually think um, if I could go back in time, my initial instinct to just snap him off um, was the one I should have gone with. So I probably got bluffed by a completely shit player, which is kind of tilting. He was on a low enough level that it got the job done. But yeah, pot sizing in that spot, I think it's really, really dumb. It's just a really dumb spot. You've got it so often. You shouldn't be betting more than 75. You could even be betting like half pot, honestly. It's, it's such a spot where you have infinite value. And the only way that it's um, it changes, like from my read on that spot, is when we have this blocker. So now he's pot, but like we have the blocker. Plus the fact that pots are retarded sizing. That's the two things that make me want to call. So yeah, I would, I, I would say badly played by me. Um, should have played it different. Anyway, that's about it, man. Um, that's all I got for the stream. Could listen to my favorite track. That's a good track. Should I do that? Are you guys in? Any track listeners? Just me, maybe.
Rock a vibe, baby. No witness. This is not even a conflict. You niggas on nonsense. Niggas die the same way in Brooklyn and Compton. But niggas with that gang gang, the niggas make a profit. Niggas on top. Niggas stay popping. Look. See, I was the high school slick, Rick, I was styling. Fat gold chain with an African medallion. Hip hop connoisseur and rolling 20 tripping. Rap game real tight, freestyle was magnificent. All about the clout and all about my dividends. Them older niggas couldn't tell me different. I need a runaway girl to let me stick it in. Showtime at the Apollo. Rock a vibe, baby. Rock the box. Take two squigs and pour out a little liquor for my niggas who won't live to see them all. One more time. I got to hit the streets off. Make the streets talk. Let them know it ain't a sweep off. This gon' be the only joint made this year that'll knock to 2003. Here we go again. How many million did my last one sell? Going to ten. This never gon' stop. Bring it. What? <sighs> Nothing but a walk. Oh, you know what? Ripping them out, and you the only one can tame me when I'm flipping them out. Bikes need them, no recovering. I spit no other than acid. I'll abide, you understand, when evidence is found. I get pounds to your niggas, they respect this bitch. I spit round at your enemies, no less than six. Always keep the extra clip, dog. Talk me well. The extra eyes on your team, I see who's next to fail. Always hold your back up. I pick it up when you slack up. And if the tension gets too close, I tell the world to back up. Bond too tight, rhymes too right. Bitch, and you little nigga lessons through life. Uh, Fucking with the dog, he's the master. Plus, he gon' show me how to blast you. Bullets hit you, then pass you. Split you, then stash you. The game is real. EVE and DMX, nigga, the names is real. One more time. I got to hit the streets off. Make the streets talk. Let them know it ain't a sweep off. This gon' be the only joint made this year that'll knock to 2003. Here we go again. How many million did my last one sell? Going to 10. It's never gon' stop. And if time I hit you, it's going straight to the top of the chart. Why you let these motherfucking clones on my throne? Uh, Bitch, get up, daddy's home. Let it be known. Yeah. All through these inner streets, where niggas ride. Out of eye and fucking traffic, where we collide. All I know up in this world is to survive. Uh, take us money, take us girl. I'll see you guys. I'll see you guys. I don't want to 